the purpose of this module is to give you a basic understanding about Excel 2016. This module covers the following topics. Starting Excel 2016. Parts of the Excel 2016 window. Creating a new workbook. Selecting cells. Excel 2016 is a software that is a part of the Microsoft Office Suite. This software is mainly used to create tables with a lot of numerical data. Excel has a number of tools and functions that help in calculations and in analyzing data using formulas and tables. In Excel, you can display data in a number of formats and also create graphs and charts based on the data. Starting Excel 2016 Let us learn how to start Excel 2016. The steps to do this are Select Start Excel 2016. The Excel window appears. Click Blank Workbook. A blank Excel worksheet will appear. A worksheet is a page with rows and columns used to store data and perform calculations. A workbook is an Excel file. It contains one or more worksheets. By default, a new Excel workbook contains one worksheet. Parts of the Excel 2016 window The parts of the Excel 2016 window are shown in the given figure. They are discussed as follows. Quick Access Toolbar The Quick Access Toolbar is meant to give quick access to commands you use often. By default, the toolbar has Save, Undo and Redo commands. You can add more commands of your choice. Title Bar The Title Bar is located at the top of the window. It displays the name of the workbook in which you are currently working. The right side of the title bar contains Minimize, Restore, Maximize, and Close buttons. Ribbon. The ribbon contains a number of tabs, each divided into groups. The groups contain commands required to perform various tasks like formatting, sorting, etc. Some groups have a small arrow at the bottom right corner. This is the dialog box launcher. Clicking on it will open a dialog box that has more commands related to the group. Scroll bars. The scroll bars appear only if you have data more than the screen can display at once. There are two scroll bars, the vertical bar on the right and the horizontal bar at the bottom. To scroll one cell at a time, click the scroll button. To scroll more, Drag the scroll bars up, down, left, or right. Status Bar The status bar is present at the bottom of the window, which displays the following. Normal View By default, a worksheet appears in Normal View. This view shows you all the rows and columns in a worksheet. Page Layout View This view divides the worksheet into pages. Page Break Preview. This view shows you an overview of a worksheet with page breaks and tells you how many printed pages would be required to hold all the data in a worksheet. You can adjust the page breaks to increase or decrease the number of printed pages. Zoom Control. You can drag the slider left or right to decrease or increase the zoom. The number to the right of the slider reflects the zoom percentage. Worksheet tabs. In Excel 2016, a workbook has tabs for each worksheet that it contains. By default, the tabs are named Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and so on. You can select the new sheet icon to add a new worksheet. If your workbook has a number of worksheets, Use the left and right arrow buttons on the left of the sheet tabs to view all the worksheets.
rows and columns. In Excel 2016, a worksheet has 1,048,576 rows and 16,384 columns. Rows are numbered from top to bottom along the left edge of the window as 1, 2, and so on. Columns are labeled from left to right using letters of the alphabet. The first column is A, the second B, and so on until Z. Then they are labeled as AA through XFD. Cell. A cell is the smallest unit of a worksheet formed by the intersection of a row and a column. Each cell has a unique address formed by the combination of a column letter and a row number. For example, the cell formed at the intersection of row 4 and column B will be named B4. A green cell boundary shows that the cell is active. In figure 7.3, G3 is the active cell. Formula bar. The formula bar displays the data or formula used in a selected cell. It is also used for entering or editing the cell contents. Name box. The name box is present to the left of the formula bar. It displays the address of the active cell. Entering data. You can enter numbers, text, and formulas in a cell of an Excel worksheet. Data is entered simply by selecting a cell and typing in it. Then press Enter. As you type, the data appears in the formula bar also, along with the active cell. Three small buttons appear to the left of the formula bar as soon as you start typing in a cell. This is the Cancel button and can be used to cancel the data entry without pressing delete. This is the enter button. Clicking this button is equivalent to pressing enter. This is called the insert function button. This button will be discussed in higher classes. By default, a workbook has only one worksheet and can contain a maximum of 255 worksheets. To create a new Excel workbook, do any one of the following. If Excel is not running, start Excel from the Start menu and then select Blank Workbook on the Excel window. If Excel is running, click the File tab, click New to display the new pane on the Backstage view, and then click Blank Workbook. Press Ctrl plus N to directly open a new Blank Workbook. Saving a Workbook the steps to save a workbook are Click the File tab. Click Save to save the workbook for the first time or with an existing name. Click Save As to save the workbook for the first time or with a new name. The Save As pane on the Backstage view appears. Click this PC or Browse. The Save As dialog box appears. Select the location where you want to save the workbook. In the File Name box, type the name of the file. Click the Save button. The workbook will be saved with the extension .xlsx. Opening an existing workbook. To open an existing workbook, follow these steps. Click File, Open. The Open pane on the Backstage view appears. Do any one of these actions. Click a file in the Recent list. Click this PC and select the file. Click the Browse button and then use the Open dialog box to find the file you want to open. Click OneDrive Personal to open a file stored on the Internet. Selecting Cells Some operations, for example, formatting text in cells, copying and pasting data, etc., may need to be performed on a range of cells. A range is a rectangular block of contiguous cells. Contiguous cells are those that are next to each other or touch each other along a line. Before performing any operation on a range of cells, you need to select the range. There are three ways to select a range. To select a range of cells using the mouse, do the following. Click the cell you wish to start your selection from. Now, drag the mouse to the last cell of the range. For example, if the range A1 
to C4 is to be selected, place the mouse pointer at cell A1 and drag it to cell C4. The range A1 to C4 is represented as A1 colon C4. When you select a range, all the cells get highlighted except the active cell using the Extend Selection mode. When the range of cells to be selected is big, dragging the mouse through the entire range can be cumbersome. In such cases, you can do the following. Click the starting cell of the range. Press F8. The status bar shows Extend Selection. Click the last cell of the range. The cell range will be selected. Press F8 or press Escape to turn off the Extend Selection mode. Using the Go To command, click the starting cell of the range. On the Home tab in the Editing group, click Find and Select. Click Go To or press F5 or press Ctrl plus G. The Go To dialog box appears. Type the cell address of the last cell of the range in the reference text box, for example, D7, or enter the range, A1 colon D7. In case you gave the last cell address, hold down the Shift key when clicking OK or pressing Enter. In case you gave the cell range, just click OK or press Enter. Selecting multiple cell ranges simultaneously. To select multiple cell ranges, do the following. Select the first range of cells. Hold the control key and select another range of cells. Repeat step 2 to select more ranges if required. Selecting complete row column. To select the complete row, click the row header. To select the complete column, click the column header. To select multiple rows or columns, select the first row or column, press Shift and click the last row or column in your selection. You can also drag through the row or column headers to select multiple contiguous rows or columns. Selecting the entire worksheet. To select the entire worksheet, click the Select All button present at the intersection of the row and column headers. Now, let us do an activity. To do this activity, you need to select cells using the Extend Selection mode. Congratulations! You have successfully completed this activity.